Coming up, the vice presidential debates went on in Utah despite the COVID-19 outbreak at the White House. And later, the UI cultural centers are closed, but students are finding other ways to create community. Welcome to DITV Now, your flash update on the biggest stories coming out of the Daily Iowan Newsroom. I'm your host, Mallory Wilson. And I'm Danny Whiskeyman. Last night, Vice President Mike Pence and Democratic Vice President nominee Kamala Harris battled it out in the ring in Salt Lake City, Utah. Daily Iowan ethics and politics editor Caleb McCullough tells us more. Mike Pence and Kamala Harris had their first and only debate Wednesday night, each arguing they would be the best vice president for the American people. Last night's debate was night and day from the presidential debate last week. Policy talks replaced last week's interruptions and arguments. Pence tried to defend Trump's first term in office by pushing economic gains and Trump's handling of COVID-19. Harris followed with a scathing review of the Trump administration. Harris said Trump's handling of the virus has cost lives and hurt America financially. Another hot topic was the Supreme Court and the Trump administration's push to confirm Judge Amy Coney Barrett to the court before Election Day. Pence defended Barrett's nomination and said she was extremely qualified to be on the court. Harris said the nomination should be halted until after the election next month, since hundreds of thousands of people have already cast their ballots by mail. Harris said the winner of the election should fill the seat. Overall, people I spoke with said the debate was easier to watch than the one between Biden and Trump, and the messages from the candidates were more clearly laid out. Trump and Biden are scheduled for two more debates before Election Day, but with President Trump still recovering from COVID-19, it's still not clear whether those will happen. With the cultural centers closed, UI students are taking it upon themselves to create community. DITV's Elizabeth Neruda has more. Everything on the University of Iowa campus has been affected by COVID-19. All four of the cultural houses on campus have been closed for the past seven weeks to slow the spread. However, even with these interruptions to the house's regularly scheduled events, the students in these groups are finding ways to keep the community alive, some even starting their own groups. The cultural house's home away from home feeling may be different, but the coordinators have been working hard to make virtual events as inclusive, exciting, and available as possible. So whether it's kind of movie nights that are coming up, I know specifically we have um, programming for the Latinx Heritage Month and the LGBTQ plus History Month that will be coming out in the next week. And so those are some pieces that we're, we're still engaging with those um, and, and really as an opportunity to provide education and awareness, but also that connection building with, with students. Virtual office hours are a big asset to the cultural houses, and using platforms like GroupMe, Discord, as well as social media is a big help to keep connections on campus, especially for freshmen who are still finding their place. I think it's like just particularly hard for like students that maybe like aren't as involved or like freshmen coming on the campus that are like trying to find their space, um, and it's a lot harder to do that. Um, just like online, and then joining a group of people that already know each other and trying to like be able to like um, join that space is also more difficult. Some students on campus are taking matters into their own hands to meet people from their same culture and create that community. Vibes is a new organization on campus focusing on providing a community for South American and Caribbean students, something that the university has not specifically provided in the past. While they are mostly focused on social media marketing right now, they have big plans for the future. We're planning on doing this cooking thing where um, select members of our exec board are going to make dishes and then post like recipes and uh, like cultural Caribbean South American dishes and then post the recipes on like our Instagram and have like um, a day where they talk about how to make it. While most orgs focus on social media, Vibes has taken to the world of podcasts with a new show called For the Culture to highlight the experiences of those on campus. Like now, most, now more than ever, I think people need to be embracing their cultures and their identities and learning about their cultures. From the University of Iowa, I'm Elizabeth Neruda, DITV News. The CDC has identified a new syndrome linked to COVID-19. This new complication is called multi-system inflammatory syndrome or MIS. MIS was first reported in children as early as May, but is now being found in adults. The CDC reports 27 adults have been identified. 10 of those 27 required intensive care and three have died. Another COVID-19 relief bill will not be passed after Republican representatives stalled negotiations. Trump said he will pass, quote, a major stimulus bill, end quote, 
immediately after the presidential election, assuming he wins. After Trump announced the end of negotiations, U.S. stocks plummeted. Analysts have said the lack of aid may cause the economic recovery to stall. A Texas grand jury has indicted Netflix for its film, Cuties. The film is about a group of children in a hip-hop dance group. The award-winning film has been criticized for its sexual portrayal of minors. However, Netflix argues that the film is a necessary comment on the sexualization of young girls. Netflix still stands by the film. Today is looking nice and sunny, with a high of 75 and a low of 56. The rest of the weekend will stay warm, with highs up in the mid-80s. Thank you for tuning in to DITV Now. We'll be back tomorrow with the latest on the University of Iowa, Iowa City, and Hawkeye Nation. From Iowa City, I'm Danny Whiskeyman. And I'm Mallory Wilson.